we're going to be talking about one of the best software programs for your genealogy. And it happens to have a great website too. It's Roots Magic. Here to uh, give us the latest on Roots Magic and Roots Magic 8, which is the newest version, is the developer and the CEO of Roots Magic, Bruce Busby. Hi, Bruce. Howdy. It is so good to see you again, my friend. It feels like it's yeah. been forever. Yeah, it's been forever. I mean, without having having conferences. I mean, we used to see each other multiple times a year at conferences. Yes. So I'm, I'm ready for well, this, this to start back up, I think. I, I think I'm ready too. I totally agree. Um, we, we're, we're talking about the software. And I, I do want to talk about your website too, because I think it's terrific. But let's start at the beginning a little bit, which is one of the questions I get a lot, and maybe you do too, is... Um, how is having your genealogy on a software database like Roots Magic different or preferable to just having it on an online family tree? Well, yeah, yeah, we get we get asked that a lot. You know, well, why should I why should I do this? You know, when I can keep my you know data on ancestry or family search or my heritage, whatever. You know, and the biggest thing is having your data on your computer on your own computer. You have complete control of that. Um, you know, you don't have to be connected to the internet in order to access your data. Um, you don't have to worry about somebody else maybe coming in there and changing your data. You know, some, some, of, the, some of the places you can put your data are global trees. You know, and, uh, you know, other people can go in and change your information. Um, some of them are not global. You know, you do have your own tree. But, you know, you have to pay so much per year to do that. And if you stop paying, all of a sudden you've kind of lost some of that control over your, over your data. Whereas if you have it on your own computer, you know, the pictures you have, the scanned documents you have, um, you know, all of those things are, are on your computer. You can make backups of them so they're safe there. Um, the, the, other, the other advantage to having it on your own computer is is just just a peace of mind you know that that if if that website you know has problems or goes down or something happens you know i've still got my own copy so i don't have to worry about that um, another advantage of having your data on your own computer is the fact that there are things you can do in a desktop program that there's just not computational power to do on a website, you know, like doing massive like merges and large generating large reports. Those are things that if your data is up on a website, the only way you can get all of the data, for example, for your whole database in a report is to have it download all of that data into a report or have the website actually have the computational power to generate that report and then send you that report, you know, over over the internet, and you know, both of those are very difficult to do, you know, transporting that data back and forth or or being able to generate enough computational power for each individual user. You know, if you have thousands or millions of of users using that, you can't. As a website, you can't dedicate that much power to each one of those users. Whereas on your own personal computer, you know that computer is 100% working on your on what you're doing. That's a great point. I mean, I'm a huge advocate of of having kind of what I call it my master family tree on my software, uh, in my software on my computer for all the security reasons you mentioned. But you also talked about, which I think is so important, is that ability to slice and dice and have so many layers of data that we can analyze. And I think yeah. as many ways as we can look at our data, all the yeah. better so that yeah. we can learn more from it. Yeah. Well, let's go back to the beginning a little bit and just let us know, um, when did Roots Magic begin? I, I feel like it's been out there forever. The actual Roots Magic program, we released it in 2003, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, we actually, I actually had written a program called Family Origins before that, which was kind of the predecessor to it. And, and it was sold through another company. I did all the development and everything, and they did the sales and marketing and everything on it. 
and that, that Family Origins, we released that in about 1991. So we went about 10 years as Family Origins and probably about almost about 20 years as Roots Magic now. That's amazing. And it's gone through many different versions. Of course, the most recent release was Roots Magic 8. Tell us about that. When did that come out and what are, what are we getting now? Yeah, Roots Magic 8 came out um, last October. And we actually, last January, not this past January, but the January before that, uh, we released a kind of a public community preview. And so we went, we did about 10 months of just letting users pound on it and complain about it and give us, you know, give us opinions, you should change this, you, you know, this doesn't work right, or this, I like this, or I don't like that, you know, and so we were able to use a lot of that information to, you know, over those 10 months, but we released it in October. Um, it, it's by far our biggest update, you know, it's, it was a total, it was a total rewrite. Um, we, uh, we, we basically started from scratch because there were a lot of things in the earlier Roots Magics that were very, could really bog you down. You know, you'd, you'd go into family, or, or family words, and I still say that sometimes. You'd go into Roots Magic, into the older versions of Roots Magic, and you'd be looking at a screen with people. And if you wanted to see your places, you'd have to pop up a screen to see the places. If you wanted to see your sources, you'd have to pop up a separate screen to see your sources. And so you go into these multiple levels of depth, you know, screen after screen after screen to get to things. And then when you were ready to get back to your people, you'd have to, you know, close, 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 close to get back to that. And so that was one of the things that we really wanted to do uh, and, to, and to fix with version eight. And so in version eight, one of the big things is just the the um, uh, kind of the overall the overall workflow to doing things. So instead of instead of always being on a person's screen and then hopping to sources or hopping to places or hopping to tasks or hopping to something else, and then going into that and then when you're done backing out and then if, to go to something else you have to go back you know go back through that. Um, what we did is we actually created multiple views in the program. So there's the person view you can look at and you can be looking at any person. And if you want to see the places, you just you just change your view to the place view. It's not a separate pop up window. It's a just it's an actual view. You can switch to it and switch right back and you can switch from a person from the person view to a place view, switch directly from that to source view directly to a task view or the address view. And you can switch between these views without having to always come back to that person view. And, and so it speeds up getting things done. You're not having to go look at your people and say, I, I need to do this, do, do, do it. And then, okay, now I need to look at something else. So back out and go back into this other thing and then back out and go back. You just switch between these views. And the great thing about these views is since they're not a pop-up The whatever you're looking at on that view stays on that view. Um, so if I go in and I'm looking at the places and I select a particular place and I see all the information about it, if I think, oh, I wanted to look at a source, I can switch to the sources. I can look at that any source. And when I switch back to that place view, I'm still working with the same place as I was before. I'm not having to go, you know, back into a place pop-up and then search for that place again to get back to where I was. So it just, it basically keeps in its memory a lot more things. So you're not having to search over and over for that same thing. You know, you're, when you're on it, you're on it. That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, in a way it's what you can offer over an online tree is just all yeah. of this different way to look at your data. I, I, which is, is it true that, would it be that over the years, just with all the different updates, is that how the layers kind of accumulated and then it brings you to a place where yeah. it's not just an update anymore? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah exactly. Every time, we would, every time you come up with an update, you'd say, oh, we're going to add this new feature. Yeah. You know, so for example, we, we added it back in the past, we added to-do lists and then we added research logs and then we added, um, then we added the ability to do 
more stuff with sources and we added, you know, and every time you, every time we added that, it was like, oh, well, the best way to do that is to pop up a new screen and put everything there. And it just, every time you added a new feature, it just added another thing you had to, you know, go into and then back out of. And now, you know, if, now if we were to add a new type of feature, we don't necessarily have to make a pop-up. We can add, create another view and make it always available so that you can switch in and out of it without losing your place within that view. Wow, okay, so there's lots of new views and things. When you were talking about it being a complete rewrite, and I know that you guys synchronize with some of the, the family trees, it had to have been an arduous process and you said that you went through months and months of user testing, which I think is fantastic because so many times you look at a website and you think they must never have run this past anybody who ever used it, you know, because mm -hmm. it doesn't look like it runs the way a user would use it. How was that for you? Was that a, a difficult decision about investing the time up front and, and people have to wait until it can be launched the way you feel like it needs to be? We, we, we wanted, we wanted to be able to get, I mean, we were, we were still fixing bugs too. So, you know, I mean, so it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like we took a completely bug free program and said, let's wait 10 months while the users, you know, I mean, so, you know, we, we were fixing bugs, they were finding bugs and reporting bugs, but they were, like I say, users were also reporting, you know, that, you know, this is overly complicated here to, to do. And so there were places where we would, tear something out and change it a little bit or or we would we would leave it we would leave something the way it was working because we liked it and we felt like it but some of the users found it was harder than than maybe what they were used to and so there were things we actually added you know we, we kind of went back and added functionality that was more similar to what they maybe were used to um, you know, I mean, probably our biggest our biggest challenge, even even now, is users that users that are coming from Roots Magic six or seven that have been using it forever, and all of a sudden eight works different, mm -hmm. and it's it's not the same, and they feel like oh this is harder to use, and when in reality, you know, I mean. So, uh, we, our users, our new users that are coming over from other programs or from no program at all, you know, overwhelmingly, they're like, I love this. I love the way it works. I love this, you know, the, the way I can get around and, and switch to any view and it doesn't, you know, they overwhelmingly love it. But it's our own existing, which un, it's unfortunate, it's our own existing long time users that seem to have the most issues with it. And a, a lot of that's just, it doesn't work the same as it used to. And I mean, I'm the same way. So, I mean, I understand completely, you know, my programming tools, if they, when, when a new version of my programming tools come out, if it works quite a bit different than it was, I almost immediately hate it, you know? And after I've used it for a while, I'm like, okay, I guess I can see why they did this. But, you know, I, mm -hmm. it's like, I really, I really like, you know, I had my I had my groove, you know, and yeah. my groove was like boom, 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 and you know, I, the the the, the hotkeys are not the same. For example, you know, it's like well, this, I used to be able to do alt this 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 this, and something was done, and now it's like I have to do different alts, or I have to click more, you know, than you know, I have to click twice instead of hitting four alt keys, you know, and so that you know for them that's longer when in reality there are things that are less steps but maybe maybe it's just not what somebody's used to so right change is always a little challenging but yeah yeah, and like, I said, I, yeah like i said i understand it completely because i'm the yeah. same way so yeah so can we use this on a pc and a mac yeah yeah with version 8 we now have um, a native mac version and a native windows version and they both work exactly the same so if you use if you use one and then switch to the other it looks exactly the same except it's it's got little red yellow and green dots instead of x's and and the little windows the little window symbols things like that but yeah they they have the same file format they have the same the same set of commands so 
It's not, it's not like a lot of times you'll have a product, a software product that the Mac version and the Windows version are quite a bit different because they're completely separate sets of code. You know, you have one team developing Mac and one team developing Windows and there's not, you know, and they, they look and work differently and maybe sometimes even have different file formats. Um, with, with this, they're the same. They're the, they, they look, feel the same. The command structure is the same. The screens are the same. The file formats the same. And in fact, when we sell the program, we actually sell, we just sell the program. And so you get a, you get a key and it's good for both Windows and the Mac version. So if you have a Windows computer and a Mac computer, you, when you buy the program, you're, you're entitled to use both versions. So you can install one on your Mac and one on your, on your Windows computer. Wow, that's terrific. Okay, so um, we talked about all the new great views, the new that it's for PC and Mac. Uh, that's two. How about what's your third best favorite thing about the new program? Um, Probably, well, it, it's a tie. It's a tie. It's probably a tie between tasks, which is which are new, and uh, our new report engine. One of the, w just quickly on our report engine, we rewrote our report engine um, because our reports in the older versions, we we were using a, a word processor control that we had had licensed, um, but it had some limitations. It couldn't ha it couldn't create like really large reports, and there was a bunch of things with it that we didn't like, but we couldn't fix because it was a third party, it was a third party product. Well, when we switched to going both Windows and Mac, that was only available for Windows. So we had to rewrite the our report engine from scratch. And so it's giving us a lot more flexibility to do things on reports in the future. Like one of the things we can do in reports is instead of saving it as a rich text file, we can save it as an actual Word docx file, an actual Word document. So it, it comes in to your little your word processor, whether it's Word or whether it's Libre or you know whatever you use. They can all read the docx file, and it's a lot more it's a lot more structured. It's not it's not quite as rolling the dice that it will work as RTF as RTF was. So that's one. And then the tasks we kind of combined. In Roots Magic 7, we had to-do lists, we had research logs, we had you know, um, uh, correspondence logs, we had all these things, which all kind of were very similar. And so what we did is we, cre we, we, we kind of replaced those all with what we call tasks. And tasks are super flexible. You go in and you just create a task and that task in Roots Magic can link to almost anything. It can link to people, places, sources, citations, um, addresses, media. So a task can link to almost anything. And what's nice is instead of instead of having like a hardwired research log where you go in and say, I want to create a research log and this is what it's for, and then going and manually adding items to that research log, you just create a task. Whenever you have anything, you just create a task, attach it to whatever people or families or events or sources or places you want. And then when it comes time to generate a report, you just say, give me all the tasks that are attached to this group of people that are within 50 miles of this place and you could basically, you end up with customized research logs. So you can, instead of having to fit, create a fixed research log and then add individual items to it that only belong to that, you take these tasks that are attached to any number of things and then you just tell it, give me a list of all the tasks for whatever criteria you want. And you've got completely customized research log, customized to-do list, whatever, whatever you want to use it for. There, it's completely customizable. So that, that's that's one of my favorites. It's super flexible. Um, it can be it can be a little confusing to work with at, at the beginning, but once you kind of see what's going on, that you know the simplicity that it's just all I got to do is create a task and attach it to whatever I want, and then when it comes time, just tell it tell it which tasks I want. You know, I want the task attached to these people, these places, these these site sources or citations, these whatever, and and you get your custom your custom research log. Well, one of the things that we mentioned at the top of this interview was the w website 
and you're talking about, you know, learning the ins and outs of a new program. Tell folks a little bit about the website, because I just think you guys have always been on the forefront of providing support and education for being able to use your program to its fullest capability. Yeah, I mean, we have, we, from the website, you can access basically everything we have. Um, you know, I get, when you go to the website, down in the bottom corner, there's a thing, you know, if you want to chat with our, with our tech support. So if you need tech support, you just go there and you click and you can chat with tech support and, you know, they can answer questions, they can help you out. Um, we also have a wiki. Um, what we've done is we kind of moved away from the online help that you, you know, like in the past you'd have your help. Well, we now have a wiki. And so, you know, it's just wiki.rootsmagic.com, but you can link to it from this, the regular, the regular website. But it's nice because it's, it's much better than help for several reasons. One, we can keep it updated, you know, you know, it, whereas the help on your computer, you know, if we change something or add something, you don't know about it unless we remembered to update the help file and, and the next update had that. Whereas now, you know, as soon as we add something, we can stick it on the wiki and you can go. But the other thing that's nice about the wiki is that, you know, we can put videos in there. We can put, you know, we can put more graphics. We can put links to, you know, to other topics um, right, right within that. So, um, you know, it's, you know, everything you could possibly want to know about how to use Roots Magic is there in the wiki. Um, we have tutorial videos. We have, it's a YouTube channel and um, you can actually get to there from that. And we have a bunch of YouTube videos on how to use the program. We have webinars that we do. Uh, we've been slacking a little bit the last the last few months and we haven't had a webinar. We need to we need to get back on that. But all of our re webinars that we've had and we've recorded, they're available up there to watch as well. Um, we have an online community, a, a message board, um, very active, and that's that's accessible from there. We have, of course, we have a blog, you know, which we we. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one of those things we, you know, we, we get behind, we get behind, but, you know, we, we have blog articles on, on all kinds of things to help. Uh, and, and then we have our email newsletter. That's kind of where we notify people when there's updates or, you know, if there's, you know, if there's things we need to contact them about. Uh, we do that mainly through our, through our uh, email newsletter. So all of those things are available right, right from the website. It's a very, we redid the website. At, at the same time as we released Roots Magic 8, the old website was was kind of clunky. It wasn't it wasn't um, responsive, you know. So like if you had a if you had a cell phone, you, you know, and you were watching watch, trying to watch it from your or view the website from your phone, you had to scroll back and forth a lot and stuff. It didn't automatically nicely squeeze in and fit and and adapt to your your phone, and, and it does that now. So. Um, but yeah, we redid, we redid it all. Oh, I guess we also have a list of user groups on our website too. So there's user groups all over the country, or actually there's some all over the world. And so that list of user groups is, is on there as well, including a list of people who want to start a user group. So if somebody wants to start a user group in their area, maybe there isn't one, they can give us their name and contact information. We can put that up and you know, people that come there can, you know, they can say, oh, this person wants to start a user group. Let me click and maybe we can get together and, and do something about that. So, Terrific. Well, gosh, there's lots new at Roots Magic. So we've got yeah. Roots Magic 8 yep. and the new website, all the resources. Yep. Bruce, thank you so much for stopping by and giving us Thanks. all this. It's been terrific talking with you. Yeah, it's been great. <laughs>